Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Shubigo, and this is going to be some Daisy tips for uh, for survival. And if you're a noob uh, to Daisy, like I was pretty recently, I think maybe a week ago, um, then you're you're gonna have a bad time. And uh, it can also be useful. Not this not only not exclusively useful for noobs, but also people who have been playing for a while who maybe don't completely understand it, I guess. Uh, I obvi Nobody really truly understands everything going on here, uh, but I have gotten a pretty good solid feel for for, for this game, and uh, I should be able to help you guys out pretty well. I'm going to try to like make it as uh, efficient as possible. I'm going to try to add some video, but I don't have videos of everything, so I'm just, I'm just going to do what I can. So, here we go. Alright, so I'm not guaranteeing that you don't know these tips already, uh, but, well, some of them you will probably know, and some of them you most likely won't know, uh, but, f and they're in no really particular order, just as I have video for them, I'll throw them up. So, uh, this first one here is a pretty, pretty basic one, and as you can see in front of me, I have a huge field, uh, well, to the right a little bit, and over there is the water hole, and I want to get to that water hole so I can fill up my bottle. I don't want to run through that huge field because there can be snipers anywhere. Like in those in those hills where you see all the trees, be really really difficult to see a sniper who's right in between some trees up there. Uh, so here I'm just kind of you want to stay when you, when you're in this kind of position, you want to stay in the bushes, the bushel, and the trees like I'm doing here. I'm not running through the middle of the field. I'm staying in these trees uh, to try to st stay a little bit uh, a little more. Be a little more careful. I mean, I do not want to get sniped, and there could be snipers anywhere, literally anywhere. And uh, more, most likely, they will be on top of a hill like that, so that they can, you know, get a better view of people. Um, so here, what you see here, I'm following the following the trees and the cover around uh, to get to the water hole, and I'm actually going to speed it up here. Alright, so I come in pretty close contact to zombies, so I'm making sure to crawl so I don't aggro them. And, um, so what's going on is I'm just crawling, I'm making sure I follow the trees, and as soon as I get far enough from the zombies, I'm pretty confident that I'm far enough from the zombies and I get back up. And what you're going to see here pretty soon, uh, let's see, so the, the water hole's there. You really don't want to cross roads unless you absolutely have to. And you just try to avoid that at all costs. And look here soon uh, let's see look off to the right and then boom I see a tent right there so I do instantly drop down because they're and that tent looks ex especially fishy I mean it's not just a tent up in the middle of the forest but it's a tent right on a road and that and it's surrounded by a f mountains so that could mean um, anything from somebody's not very smart with tent placing, or they're camping the tent. Oh, that's kind of funny. Okay. But they, they put the tent there, and they're just waiting for people to go to the tent and loot it. And so, wh what I did here was I dropped down right away, because, I mean, anybody, there's really anywhere. People could be anywhere. And, um... Uh, let's see here. So I'm making, I'm just kind of scoping out the zone a little bit, trying to be careful. And what I ultimately do is go, as I run up to the tent, but I run up right to it, and then I run right back away. I uh, ended up not having anything in it, and you're going to see here pretty soon how you can tell that if you're not completely sure. I'm going to fast forward to it. Okay, so we're running up here, I'm going to get some water, and what I like to do is once I fill it up, I, t I drink the water, and then I fill it up again, just to kind of restore my uh, my little water bar there on the right. I'm still being careful going around the water. Could be popular spot, could not be, I'm just kind of deep in the mountains. So I run up to it, and you see right here? Okay, so when you look at something, uh, any items on the floor or tents, you either see this symbol, or you see a symbol with a uh, circle through it. S or with a circle around the gun and that means that there's loot inside it and with this particular symbol right here with the little three lines under it they kind of look like magazines I guess uh, I th I'm pretty sure I'm like 90% sure means there's no loot in it so I went up saw that and ran right back away because 
Uh, from my experience, there's not going to be any loot with that symbol. And, um, you know, that's really all a sniper needs to see as you run up to it, and then they can just follow you forever. So it's you got to be kind of careful. Uh, but then again, if it does have loot, it might be worth the risk. So, kabloomy. All right, so uh, what you see here is I am chilling in a forest looking into this little uh, kind of small town. And what I'm looking for is zombies. I'm looking for zombies that are uh, pretty far away from me. Because if you see zombies that are really far from you, the, that means there is going to be somebody there. Because zombies only spawn if there's somebody around uh, the area. But I will. I also see zombies pretty cl uh I do see some zombies, but I'm... See like that one right there, but I do think I thought at this point that it was um, probably me spawning the zombies. So you want to be kind of careful and be able to tell the difference between the zombies you spawn and the zombies somebody else might have spawned. And that difference is basically the distance. If uh, uh, I don't, I'm not really too good with uh, meters. I think it is, uh, but I'd say well, that's like 300. Or, yeah, meters. It's like 300 meters away 200 th I don't know I'm not that great but uh, if, if if you saw a zombie back there behind that red house then that would probably not be one I spawned they don't spawn that far away from you so you gotta be careful with that and that's a really good indicator to tell if there's anybody near you that could indeed save your life something I also kinda forgot to mention was it could end your life just as easily as it can save your life because uh, back to the sniper thing. If snipers see, uh, they could be camping, looking down on the city. If they see the zombies, they're going to keep their eyes open for a survivor as well. Uh, because that means there's a survivor somewhere. Also, what you see me doing here a lot was uh, checking my six. Which basically just means, uh, you know, if you, would see, if you see a clock, uh, 12 is up and 3 to the right, 9 to the left, and 6 at the bottom. So if you check your 3, you're looking to the right. Uh, 9 to the left and 12 is right ahead uh, straight ahead of you so if you're checking your six you're looking behind you so you're just trying to you know maintain your clock look around yourself at all times check your six uh, be really careful if anybody's sneaking up on you because that is more than possible to happen especially if a, if a uh, sniper is or has spotted you all right so my intentions are kind of to make this video pretty long because I want to get off I want to just get out everything that I could possibly say that is helpful to you or to helpful to somebody who's, who's new to the game or just somebody who needs help in general with the game um so this could be pretty long and uh you would probably already know that by now so what I'm gonna cover right now is maybe might be a little general I'm going to cover a little bit of tips. So I'm here at the uh, the Southwest Airfield, and I think that's kind of a rare gun, Silence MP5. But I didn't... Well, I, okay, anyway, Silence MP5 doesn't matter. Uh, but I'm just going to cover a couple guns, I guess. Uh, first of all, the Makarov. Uh, it's not very powerful, and I'm going to link you in the description uh, kind of a weapons... If you go to Day's, Daisy, type in to Google Daisy Wiki, uh, you'll find some useful information there. But... Basically, the Makarov's not that powerful, but it can be pretty good if you aim it right. And uh, in this game, a lot of times you'll find that you're kind of running out of ammo. And um, so with the Makarov, the Makarov is pretty quiet, so that's good. And with it, you want to shoot every zombie in the head to save your ammo. And uh, if you're just unloading bullets, unloading your whole magazine into a zombie's chest, it's just not very efficient at all. Uh, just It just takes one shot in the head. And it's really easy. Uh, if you go inside, they'll just come through the doorway and you, it's just, it's really simple. Um, let's see, also, uh, so the, the loudness of the macro is not too bad. It's really good, actually. And that, that goes the same with the M1911. It's also pretty quiet. I'm not sure how quiet it is. Compared to the Makarov, it might be a little more loud. Um, and so, let's see, also the Winchester used to be more quiet, but I think it got nerfed, so it's now louder. And one of the loudest guns, I think, in the game is the Lee Enfield. And you want to be careful with that gun because it's loud. <laughs> it will attract uh, all zombies, ever, forever, from 1,800 miles away. N no. 
but it will attract a lot of zombies and that's how I almost died one time uh, if you watch my videos a lot I was in a building using the infield and uh, yeah I pretty much aggroed all of Cherno Cherno Cherna chicken okay that that main place uh, so uh, Winchester's a good gun the gun I have right now is a um, Remington 870 is that uh, you guys can see it in the top right corner I can't really read that but um, it's I think it's it's pretty similar to the Winchester but it's louder I think and I think it's also more powerful and it has a flashlight on it but I think the flashlight's bugged so and a lot of times it's good to go with a gun that may not be as good as the one you have right now but has more ammo with it uh, so you gotta be kinda careful when you're choosing guns and also it's really important to consider the loudness of the gun and how effectively it can kill players okay so I've got um, I've got one request to do tips as a whole and I've got one request on um, you know kinda aiming and shooting and like I kinda just said uh, the Makarov you always want to aim for headshots and headshots on a zombie with the Makarov is actually really easy and it's easy because they're really predictable um, most likely if you're gonna be killing zombies you're gonna be inside like this and zombies kind of do a little bobby thing so you can tell where their heads going so it's really simple to get a headshot on them I see how he's bobbing back and forth and it just bobs right into your bullet really simple to do that um, I don't know, you just I guess it takes a little bit of practice but it it didn't it wasn't that hard for me to get used to that uh, it's pretty it's a pretty simple idea also um, since that that's just with the Makarov you don't need to aim for headshots when you have guns that don't require a headshot like the the 1911 and the infield uh, you and well other guns but those uh, for example you don't have you shouldn't actually aim for a headshot because it's you'll there's a higher chance for you to miss and um, what those kill in one shot so you just have to hit them in the body at most of the time I think I sometimes they might not but for the most part they kill in one shot so you really just have to aim at the body um, and you should be able to get them no problem uh, that's that's really it it's as simple as it gets most guns are one shots on zombies uh, other than the Makarov so uh, but macro is most most um, most common, so just aim for the head. Even with these these uh, walking guys, you can tell where the head's gonna go. Uh, maybe just practice it on a town full of zombies going to aggro the town, run into a building, and then practice like that. Pretty simple. All right, so I guess a couple tips for nighttime survival. Uh, first off, if you're brand new, you start off with a macro and flares as like your general. Uh, scroll options and the flare is what you just saw I threw it out and boom kabloom a lot of red lightage and uh, basically what that means is you can see but you can also be seen very easily by bandit bandits uh, at this time in the video uh, the mod or the update wasn't out that um, made flares attract zombies so I didn't have to worry about that but flares now uh, attract zombies, so you do have to be really careful with that. And it's um, quite frowned upon to run around with a flare, and that's because you're going to probably get killed. Uh, a lot of the, or before earlier when I started, I ran around with it anyway because you can't see unless you run with it. But um, I don't, you just gotta you have to throw it over and over again, kind of, and I don't. You have to be careful. A dark or nighttime survival is definitely a little difficult and plus there's people you have to worry about having um or bandits whom you have to worry about having what bandits occasionally have NVGs which are night vision goggles which are a huge pain for you uh, because I can see you but luckily it's rare uh, they're the night vision goggles are rare to find so um, it's not super likely that you'll run into somebody with the goggles, but if, if you do, you're probably screwed at nighttime. Um, now just be careful. Try to stay away from flares. Just throw them really far and run up to them. And um, you know that's that's really it. I don't personally like chem lights. Uh, just I don't know. They seem like they only illuminate you so that everybody can kill you. They don't really illuminate that much else. Um, and flashlights, I kind of, you can't run, like, you can't jog 
with flashlight. Well, you can, but it'll look down. You can't see, so you have to kind of walk while you have a flashlight to see, and it's kind of not really that great, but um, I don't know. I guess they're pretty good. The flashlights are okay. Uh, I personally try not to carry them around because they take up space, a uh, pretty good chunk of space, so I don't know. It's kind of up to you when it comes to that stuff. Uh, and also, when during night, you want to do exactly the opposite of what you see. You want to stay off the roads, and you want to stay away from flares. So, um, this is a pretty early video of me. This is um, probably a few days ago, towards when I was starting. So, uh, so yeah, definitely don't follow what you're seeing on here. Bad idea. You will die. So, be careful. All right. So. This is actually kind of a screwed up clip. I'm not really particularly proud of this, but um, and this is back in my bandit days, you know, about two days ago. I did actually stop killing people uh, as of today. I'm not being a bandit anymore because it's just not right. It's not realistic uh, for me personally to be a bandit. So what's going on here is we have two guys at this uh, this kind of little encampment here. And during this time, I was like, uh, just in the mindset of kill everybody. And so that's what I did. And there's two guys here, and um, I kind of, now that I, I looked back at this, I was just watching this, I feel pretty freaking bad about killing these guys. Because uh, it just, it doesn't seem like they really <laughs> were very hostile. It kind of seemed like they were noobs with strong weapons. This guy had an AK, something, AK-74, I think. Um, but he like ran out of ammo and this the other guy came up to me and he was clicking his gun and doing the Q the QE thing and I just I guess I did not even realize it I was too in the moment and I just capped him so basically what I'm trying to teach here is uh, I guess I'm gonna try to tell you about some combat here uh, you got you have to have cover if you're trying to trying to kill some people and this is I really want you to just use this against bandits or people trying to kill you don't go around killing innocent people for no reason um, so right here this is a bad example of uh, yeah just killing innocent people um, but you see, you see right here this Humvee right here is pretty much my main source of safety uh, as long as I'm behind this I feel pretty safe and I just keep shooting over it and there's two tactics you can uh, use here you can either use the be careful with your aim and shoot them in the head or you can throw all of your magazines into their body quickly as fast as you can uh, and if you hear them shooting get down like that you just gotta be careful um, kill the one who's the most threatening uh, like that guy right there who's aiming at me is obviously the most threatening. The guy off to the left has no idea what's going on. Just running around uh, wildly. And that's probably because he has no ammo. Uh, which I apparently did not realize. So I did feel really bad about this. But at the time I didn't at all. I was like, oh my god, these guys are going to kill me. I thought I was, I thought I was going to be dead going into it. But luckily they weren't very experienced. And I ended up killing them. Fortunately, See, look at this guy. He's clicking his his weapon and going doing that friendly thing. And for some reason, I killed him. I guess I didn't notice it, but um, if you do want to have the jump on these guys, as you saw, I did have the the jump. I had the advantage. And if you are going to have to kill somebody for whatever reason, uh, first of all, try not to. But if you do have to, make sure you have the advantage. Um, as you saw earlier, I started shooting at that guy on the ground uh, when he was being attacked by the zombie. Sure, it's cheap, but it's survival. Uh, well, this Pacific, Pacific, this specific example is not survival. This is killing for fun, which you shouldn't do. But uh, that's just, I don't know, that's the best uh, tips I can really get for that. Uh, I guess in the end I got some mags and some equipment, but once again, not super proud of it. But uh, So the, the main point here is two things, or three things really, first of all. Make sure you have cover when you're shooting somebody. You don't want to be in an open field or anything like that. You don't want to be vulnerable. And second, or well, it's either two or three. Choose to either be precise and shoot them in the head, or choose to just go balls out and um, just unload your clip into them. And that might be a better option if you have a more powerful gun like the 1911 or something like that. Uh, whereas the headshot option would be best with Makarov probably. So, you know, it's up to you. And uh, ultimately, I don't condone killing people, killing innocent people, or even killing anybody unless they try to kill you or it's absolutely necessary for you to kill them. Uh, my bandit days are over. 
I'm trying to be a nice guy. So that's uh, that's my little opinion type of thing on that. Okay, so now I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, when you're first starting off, when you first spawn, whether it's once you die after a while or if it's your very first time spawning. Uh, it's more like it's most likely that you are going to spawn uh, maybe somewhere around Kamen Kaminka or Komaravo. Uh, I'm just saying it how it looks. I'm sounding it out like that. I'm not trying to be all like mad whack, bro. Um, first of all, actually, before I say anything, uh, in the description you'll find a map for the uh, for the game that you should have with you, or you should be able to look at while you're playing the game. I have dual monitors, so I have my map up on one monitor while I play the game, and it will make your life way easier. So you're probably going to spawn somewhere around Kaminka or Komaravo or uh, Belota or maybe somewhere around Kapkalova or Otmil. Ultima. Uh, I know you might have no idea what I'm saying. So if you don't, Cap Galova is a uh, a kind of lighthouse place in in between Kurno and Electro, which are the two main cities. Um, and actually, I think right now I'll just kind of let you know how to tell where you are, I guess. So if you pull up this map that I linked in the description, uh, and you center on on Kurno and Electro, you'll see uh, Cap Galova right in between there. And in the center of that little little area that sticks out is a lighthouse. And there's two main lighthouses that you'll find. Or maybe three, but two island lighthouses, I guess I mean. And one is on an island connected to uh, connected to the mainland. And one is on an island uh, off the mainland, just an island by itself. And the one connected to the mainland, which is Cap Galova, is in between Electro and Cherno. So, if you follow... The uh, if you have the ocean on your right, then you'll get to Electro from there. If you have it on your left, you'll get to Kerno. Um, Electro, I think personally has better supplies, but I guess it doesn't. I mean, both might have better, but or both might have good supplies, but uh, I don't know, Electro seems better to me. I'm not too sure. Uh, and the other lighthouse is Dracon, and that is on the east side of um, Electro, and that's a that's a lighthouse on an island not connected to the mainland. So if you see that, you'll know where you are. I kind of use these to tell where I am. And so if you follow that right, you'll get up to, if you follow the water right from Dracon, uh, you'll get up to Kami Shavo. You follow it left, you get to Electro, and you should be able to see Electro if you're by Dracon. Um, but I think occasionally you will spawn more eastern, but it's kind of less likely, uh, like t towards Krutoi Cap. Um, but ultimately, if you spawn over there, if you have the ocean on your left side, then you just run along there, and you'll find Electro and Kurno, which are two main cities, which, um, I'm not saying it's a great idea to go to those if you're new, but they do have a lot of loot, so, I mean, uh, if you can be careful, then that is a good option. Otherwise, you might want to check out places like Kami Shavo, uh, or Komaravo Coma or Kaminka which are uh, kind of smaller places, but they could have some stuff. And also, the shoreline is filled with people, so you want to be really careful. Uh, don't just go murdering everybody you see. That's not a wonderful idea and not realistic. But um, Belota, okay, Belota real quick I'll talk about, is a place you might want to be careful around because Belota um, is pretty popular because it has an airfield, and airfields have military weapons. Um, and just important loot to people. So if you're by Belota, you might want to be careful. Belota is directly east, right next to Com Comoravo, directly re west from Kurno. So uh, that's <clears throat> that's about it. I mean, your best option, honestly, if you're trying to survive, you just got the game, or just in general, I guess, your best option is to head north and go to somewhere like Bor, I guess, or Kozlovka, or Drazino. Um, just somewhere else, and uh, the you can get pretty good weapons from big barns, and just long, just long barn type of things up in the north. Uh, you can get good weapons from that in fields, Winchesters, uh, snipers, crossbows. So that would be a good place to start off. That's what I originally did myself. I did not wander straight into the main cities. Not a great idea. So uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much the you know little newbie survival there. 
All right, I think I've covered most stuff. Um, real quick, I guess it's really important for you guys to find, um, well, it's really important just in general to find a compass. Uh, that for me is one of the most important is the compass and, um, burp, excuse me, a uh, compass and a map, which seems to be a little more difficult to come across, and it's not completely necessary because you have the other map, but at the same time it can be pretty useful. Uh, and it also shows bus stops, with it, which other maps I don't think do. Um, so map, compass, watch. I don't really use the watch all that much, m all that much in game, and I can always ask somebody else for it. So it's not super important to find a watch, but I think finding a compass is pretty significant. So uh, I'd recommend trying to find one of those before, preferably before you go north. But I mean, recently I just went straight north without finding a compass because. Uh, most likely your best chance of finding a compass is in a main city. I just didn't really want to risk that. Uh, so I just s went north and um, eventually you run into landmarks that you can find on the map so you'll be able to find out where you are. Or um, street signs or just signs to tell you what town you're in or something like that. Um, and that's a really good way to navigate. If you're, if you're lost, um, just keep running until you run into a road. And then follow the road. And if this isn't a main road, it's a dirt road then uh, maybe it'll lead to a main road and then you follow a main road and it's once again it's kind of a safety thing safety problem if you're following a main road you could get killed but uh, you should follow off to the side of a road probably uh, but you follow that until you find a road sign or a street sign and um, you'll run into there's a couple different signs the first one or uh, and I guess they're all important but the first one is a blue one a blue sign that uh, points in I think two different directions one way it points in one direction and tells you um, a city and how far it is I think that's in kilometers the number how far it is and then there's another one that points the other way and says how far that is so if you see that you can go to your map and find it in the Russian language look above you can see the American uh, translation and then that's where you are where you can be and there's another one that is uh, just a white sign with the name on it which is the name of a city if it has a red th a red um oh god what's it called red line through it then that means you're leaving that city if it's not if it doesn't have a red line if it's just the name of it on a white sign then you're entering that city so uh, pretty basic navigational skills and one really uh, really basic tip is um, when you go in buildings zombies don't run so you want to go in buildings whenever you're being chased by zombies. Shoot them in the head if you have a Makarov. Otherwise, hit them in the body. All right. So one thing I actually forgot to talk about is backpacks. Uh, it's a really basic thing. You start with a Coyote Patrol, a patrol backpack, I think, and that's eight slots. Six, six eight. I think it's eight. Um, and you'll come across backpacks in game and to pick up the backpacks you have to look at them and then scroll your mouse and you'll see the option to uh, you should see the option to pick up the backpack and I'll put yours down and pick that up um, it doesn't automatically switch your items from your old backpack to the new one so if you wanna um, scroll at the backpack that you just dropped click the open backpack and then you can switch the ba switch the stuff between the backpacks um, a really good backpack that you want to find is an Alice pack, which is a uh, kind of like a wide backpack. Um, it's just it's just wider and tan. I mean, it's kind of hard to explain, but it's like 20 slots. I think it's a really nice backpack. Uh, another one is the check bag or the check backpack. Um, I think that's 16 slots, and it's kind of a uh, a lengthier type of one, and it's greenish. It's like a camouflage type of color. So that's also um, a good pack pack, a pack pack, pack pack to come across. Um, there's also one I think that's bigger, maybe 24 slots or, or 30 or something, called the Coyote Elite or something. Um, that is supposed to be really rare. You probably won't come across one of those, at least not for a while. So I just wanted to discuss backpacks really quick. I didn't want to leave too much out. So, um, so yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be it for now, guys. I appreciate you watching this if you watched it all the way through. Uh, hopefully I helped you out. If not, let me know. If you have more tips, let me know. Uh, I'd be more than happy to make another video. Um, so, that's it guys. Have fun murdering zombies and staying away from bandits. And I will see you later.